Reese here with 3D Flight. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to build the 3D Flight Hyperop. Now, if you haven't seen a flight video for this airplane, I highly recommend you take a look at the link in the description down below. This plane's characteristics make it a fun and stable flyer. It isn't our fastest flyer, but it still has a great top speed if you go ahead and open it up. And it performs really nice tight rolls. With that covered, let's go ahead and gather our materials and get started with the build. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to assemble the segments that make up your wing. Start by removing any raft that may be on your part and cleaning up any excess material with an X-Acto blade. Then you can start gluing your wing segments together. Now when gluing these parts together, we like to glue them together vertically. This allows gravity to pull the glue down into the joint and creates a really nice strong bond. Apply glue to the outer layer and the support structure in between. Hold the part vertically over the mating segment and apply accelerator. If there's any excess glue, you can wipe it free with a paper towel. Go ahead and repeat that for the rest of the segments. Now we have little tabs designed into the wing segments, which make aligning the segments incredibly easy and effortless. But one thing you're going to have to pay attention to is not adding any undesired angle between the segments. A crooked wing will make a plane fly crooked, so do your best to avoid that. It's really easy to avoid, you just have to pay attention. Lastly, finish up by adding the catch for assembly with a fuselage. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to assemble the segments that make up your fuselage and cut out the holes for your canopy entry and servo leads. Start by gluing your fuselage segments together. Apply glue to the outer layer and support structure in between. Apply accelerator, and if there's any excess glue, you can go ahead and wipe it free with a paper towel. One thing to pay attention to here is you will notice when gluing the fuselage 3 and fuselage 4 together that a segment of the outer layer doesn't meet up. That is intentional. But in order to keep these parts nice and strong to handle the rigors of landing, you should add some glue to the support structure area indicated by the arrows. Then go ahead and cut out the holes for your canopy entry and elevator servo lead. We like to use a spare tip on our soldering iron to do this because the hot tip melts the layers together and keeps the parts really nice and strong. You can also use a blade to make this cut, you just lose that benefit. Lastly, you can open up the holes for the bosses used to mount the fuselage to the wing. Again, we like to use a soldering iron. Just avoid going too deep as you don't want to open the holes so much that they easily strip. You can also drill these holes if you choose to. We like to use a 3 30 seconds bit and just drill the very beginning portion.
In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to glue together the segments that make up both your tail booms. Start by gluing together your segments. Apply glue to the outer layer of the segment and the support structure in between. Apply accelerator, and if there's any excess glue, go ahead and wipe it free with a paper towel. When gluing the segments together, you want to avoid mixing up the pieces from either tail boom, as they look similar. But one tail boom has a tube for sliding a control rod through, which should make it pretty clear. We recommend you lay your parts out prior to gluing just to make sure. Another thing to look out for is don't glue the control rod tube shut when gluing these parts together. If it's blocked, your elevator control rod won't be able to slide through. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to glue together your canopy segments and add your magnet with the correct polarity. Start by gluing together the segments that make up your canopy. Add glue, then hold the segments together, and apply accelerator. If you have any excess glue, go ahead and wipe it free with a paper towel. Glue one magnet into the canopy, and when gluing your magnet into the fuselage, you may want to double or triple check the orientation prior to gluing to make sure you get the correct polarity. If you mess this up, you may be able to pry out the magnet. If not, you can always repent the canopy. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to attach your ailerons to the wing using CA hinge. Also, we're going to show you how to install your servos and control rods for your ailerons. Start by cutting CA hinges that are 0.2 inches by 0.6 inches. Then you can glue your CA hinges into an aileron, but prior to the glue curing, we suggest you do an alignment check for the hinges with their wing slots. Then you can apply a small dab of glue to the wing side of the CA hinges and press into the wing. Check for full motion of the aileron. There should be a small gap between the aileron and the wing to allow for this, and then apply accelerator. Make sure, when gluing, that you avoid excess glue. The buildup may limit the travel of your ailerons. Once your ailerons are in place, you can go and install your servos and control rods. Start by making sure your servo arms are pointed opposite ways. We highly recommend that you use a servo tester while installing your servo arms and control rods to make sure everything is installed in the neutral position. That way, you will avoid significant trimming later. Then, clip the appendages that protrude from the side of the servos. Slide your servo leads up through the designed in paths to the wing, and you'll be able to place them into their slot. Then you can add your control rods, place the Z-bend at the front and rear of the control rod, making sure to keep the spacing correct from the control arm to the control horn. Finish by gluing down your servos. You have a little bit of micro adjustment there, so go ahead and use it. When adding this glue, use small dabs because it makes it easier if you have to go in and cut out a bad servo.
this section of the video, we're going to show you how to add your tail booms to the wing and glue your horizontal stabilizer between the two tail booms. Start by creating entry holes into the bosses for mounting your tail booms to your wing. Again, use a soldering iron or a 3 30 seconds drill bit. If your wing isn't clear and you need to locate these bosses, you should be able to do it by holding it up to a light. Next, mount your tail booms to your wing using self-tapping screws. You may have to clean up the rear part of your wing or the inside of your receiving slot for your tail boom based on how your printer prints. You can do this with an X-Acto blade or some sandpaper. With your tail boom in place, you can glue together your segments of your horizontal stabilizer. Then glue one side to the tail boom and apply accelerator. Do the same for the other side. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to attach your elevator to the horizontal stabilizer using CA hinge and then install the servo and control rod that actuate the elevator. Start by cutting CA hinge strips that are 0.2 inches by 0.6 inches. Next, glue together the segments that make up your elevator. Then apply glue to one side of the CA hinges, again apply sparingly, and add them to the slots in your elevator. Then do an alignment check with the horizontal stabilizer prior to the glue drying. Apply glue to the other end of the CA hinges and press them into the horizontal stabilizer. Make sure you have full range of motion for your elevator and then apply accelerator. With your elevator in place, you can install the, your servo. Clip the appendages on the side of the servo, slide the lead up through the path designed into the wing. You may have to use control rod material to accomplish this and press the servo down into its slot. Next, you can add your control rod. Slide your control rod through the tube designed into the tail boom and place a Z-bend at the front of the control rod. Slide your servo over the control rod and repress it back into place and glue it down. Again, apply glue sparingly. Lastly, finish by securing your elevator to your control rod by adding bends at the elevator control horn. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to get your motor mounted in the correct orientation and installed in your fuselage. Then we'll show you how the fuselage mounts to the wing. Start by opening up screw bosses that will allow you to screw into your motor mount. Use a soldering iron or an X-Acto blade to cut along the boss openings. You may have to hold it up to the light in order to locate them. Next you can mount your motor to your motor mount. We like to add some glue to the front and rear of the motor mount to provide a little bit of insulation in the event that your motor does get warm. 
Just be sure to apply an even layer and not add any motor thrust angle. Next, you can screw the back of your motor to your motor mount, making sure that the motor leads go over the flat section of the circular part of the mount. Then, connect a motor lead extension to the motor. We're not sure if you can purchase these. We made our own by soldering male and female connectors to wire that was similar gauge to our motor leads. Feed this extension through the fuselage until you are able to slide your mount under the receiving tabs inside the back of the fuselage. Make sure that the mount tabs end up under both the ribs designed into the fuselage. If you go between these ribs, it won't align correctly. Then screw your self-tapping screws into the mount through the sides of the fuselage and your mount should be nice and secure. Next, route your servo leads up through the respective holes in the fuselage. Align the fuselage receiving slot over the catch portion of the wing and screw down the fuselage with self-tapping screws. Finish by gluing down Velcro at the bottom of the fuselage for the battery. We really prefer to use Velcro for securing down our battery, although you can use any method you want. Another method that works really well is rubber bands looped through the support structure. In this section of the video, we're going to go over pre-flight considerations you'll want to cover before your maiden flight. Start by getting your battery, ESC, and receiver all hooked up to your servos and motor correctly. Then make sure your channels are set up correctly. Stick input of roll right should cause the right aileron to come up and the left aileron to go down. Stick input of roll left should cause your left aileron to come up and your right aileron to go down. Stick input of pitch up should cause the elevator to move up, and stick input of pitch down should cause the elevator to move down. Since this is a pusher, your motor should be spinning clockwise. When spinning clockwise and creating thrust, the prop has a self-tightening action on the prop nut. Next, neutralize your surfaces using sub-trim, and set your throws to the correct distance. Take a look at the instruction manual found on our website for the limits on the throw distance. Lastly, balance your airplane and install your prop prior to your maiden flight. To balance the plane, you will find two CG markers located on the bottom of the wing. Place your fingers on these balance markers and the plane should balance slightly nose down. Make sure that your plane is creating forward thrust prior to your maiden and go out and enjoy.
gonna go ahead and finish up here. One thing I like to do is go ahead and mark the raised portion of this canopy with a Sharpie. Kind of gives it a nice finished cockpit pit feel. If you like what we're doing here, go ahead and subscribe. I'll try and place an emblem right about here in the video. And last thing I wanted to leave you with is please don't pass on these files. Uh, it takes a lot of time, effort, and ingenuity to bring these planes to life. And really your support is what keeps us being able to make these airplanes. So, till next time.